Pray for yourself. I set my face like a flint. I put my hand to the plow. I do not go back. I am engaging the fight for souls. Bringing men out of darkness into the glorious light. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift those hands and begin to give him praise and begin to bless the name of Jesus. Giving thanks unto the Father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Revelation knowledge growing big in our hearts. Legro to in the name of Jesus. Oh, nako sakile de baya. Brondango zuka. Tequila ne mando. Legerina katanakle ne mananga galanama na korotos. Breda gogo suka lada baba. Ze koloto barakataya. These are the days of my power, saith God. These are the days of my power. And my people are willing. My people are willing. And my people are ready. And my people are committed. To walk in this light, to walk in this light, to go into the kingdom of darkness and pull men out of darkness into the light. My people are ready, my people are committed, and there is going to be an invasion, an invasion, an invasion into the kingdom of darkness like never before. The light will shine like never before. You are light bearers, and you will carry that light and shine it in the dark places of the earth. Saith God, none of you shall be put under a bed. None of you shall be put in a corner. You will be set at the top of the hill. And you will shine this light like never before. Men that sit in the valley will see the light. Men that stand from afar will see the light. Hey, say of the spirit of God, you will not be ignored. You will not be ignored. You will not be ignored. Because you carry what the world is looking for. Therefore, get ready, saith God, to make manifest the savor of my mandate upon your life. And I will do great things, and I will do mighty things, and I will do unusual things, say of the Spirit of God, than you've ever seen before. And out of you suddenly will be exploits like you never dreamt of, abilities you never knew were there. They will suddenly show forth, and there will be a demonstration of my glory like you've never dreamt of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all over the world, the knowledge of my glory will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. And as you preach my word, I will walk with my word confirming it through you and yea there will be rejoicing and great rejoicing like never before because men will suddenly have hope because you'll be begotten to a lively hope thank you lord jesus praise your father egebo zekele ne mambro rakoto ninkali na mama mambro godoso kele ne maya thank you father can you wave those hands and give him some praise in this place praise your father legro sokolo do bobo sekia lekra to sekele ne mosakaya praise your father and lord this morning revelation knowledge flows in this service like never before your people equipped to shine this light like never before and we rejoice that by the end of this service we'll be the better for it in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen on a note of finality amen. lift your right hands above your head let's release our faith together as we say these words i am born of god i am born of the world the word of god is my nature i do not struggle to do the word i do the word naturally therefore today i will understand the word of his grace i will be built up by the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Are we excited to fellowship in the world this morning? Amen. Oh glory, can we celebrate our fellowship together? Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Amen. amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet smart self. This morning, glory to God. We well, want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. 
all of the social media community, our brothers and sisters online. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service this morning. I'm telling you, we're going to have a great adventure as we, you know, walk through the scriptures and see the things that are ours in Christ Jesus. You want to invite a friend, share the video, including those of us in the building. Grab your phones, let's share the videos. Share the videos, tag some people. You know, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like it. Press that thumb. Just like it because all of those activities helps to create visibility for what we are doing all over the nations of the earth. It's a joy to be back home. It's a joy to be here. We had amazing moments in, in Abuja. Abuja was, you know, off the hook. Abuja was explosive and we look forward to greater times in Abuja in the weeks to come. We also had a great time in Enugu. Enugu was very explosive. It was just beautiful to see Pastor Oji and all the, all the you know, some of our brethren from Asaba, from Onicha, from, uh, from Owere, from, um, from um, uh, Nsuka, all converged in Enugu. It was such a great conference and it was a blessing to just see the brethren there. Praise God. All right, we're looking at building your spiritual life, and I hope to round off this series in this service. Building your spiritual life. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. <clears throat> and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we've established that the moment I listen to Jesus, or the moment I see these teachings of Jesus, he was reading from Genesis to Malachi. Because Luke chapter 24 verse 25 to 27 gives us a premise. When Jesus rose from the dead, he met those gentlemen on the way to Emmaus, he met Cleopas and arguably his wife. They were discussing about the event of the past three days. And Jesus said to them, what are you guys talking about? And they said, are you a stranger in town? Have you not heard about that good guy, Jesus, that was killed the other day? And then to rebuke them and fix their minds right, Jesus said to them, oh fool, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Next verse. And beginning at Moses. That's how Jesus always taught. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So Jesus' teachings always began from Moses. Jesus used Moses' teaching notes and he used the teaching notes of the prophets in the incarnation when he walked upon the face of the earth. So we began to look at the different things about spiritual growth and we said that Jesus was definitely teaching on spiritual growth from Genesis. The book of Genesis is the core of what Jesus was discussing. And then we began to look at a particular principle in Genesis that affects the development of the believer's life. Now, we're going to do a little, lot more of practical in this session. It's important for you to realize that God desires for you to grow. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, brother Peter said, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Desire, desire, have a strong persuasion for the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. <clears throat> so we began to look at the principle in Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. Genesis Chapter 1, verse number 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Take note of that, that, that word, his kind. After his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Now we, we've established that which means therefore that the law of sowing and reaping is the law that guards spiritual development. The law of sowing and reaping is the law that guards spiritual development. That is to say, nothing will develop if it's not first planted. For something to grow, it must first be planted. It is when it is planted that it can grow. Take note of where it is planted. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 says, it is planted in the earth. 
in the earth. And then he now says, it will bring forth fruit. And that's the word in Hebrew, dasha, D-A-S-H-A. It will bring forth fruit, meaning it has to do with turning green, something that flourishes. It will bring forth fruit. Now, we explored a little more in the first service. What is the earth in Genesis? We said the earth in Genesis refers to man. It refers to man. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The earth was without form and void to hua bohua, nothing, nothing. That shows an unsaved world. And we also said it can be referred to a man that is not born again. Nothing, nothing. Darkness. Darkness. And then God's solution to that darkness is God said, let there be light. Let there be light. So the solution to Genesis 1-2 will be Genesis 1-3 darkness without form without void and God's solution for a dark heart is light so the earth he was dealing with in Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 is the earth with the spirit of God because by verse 11 he had already spoken light in verse 3 so is the earth that is with the light is the earth that has the spirit of God it also means therefore that the seed that will bring forth after his kind is the seed of the spirit of God. So which means that the earth that brings forth fruit of the seed is the seed of the word of God. Or the earth that is born again. The earth that is born again. And this morning we saw that that seed now became the seed of the serpent in Genesis 3. And the seed of the woman. And then we said the seed of the serpent will be Genesis 1 and 2. Darkness without form and void. The seed of the woman will be Genesis 1 and 3. God said let there be light. Alright. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehends it not. I'll encourage you to get the first services material. It will help you to get the picture. Full picture of what we taught in the first service. And then we traveled and came to where we stopped in that first service. And I'm just going to shoot from where we stopped in the first service. So we said that the story of Genesis is the story of God's grace. That is, the book of Genesis tells us a story that it is not going to be by works. It's going to be by grace. It's not going to be by efforts. It's going to be by grace. For by grace are you saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. You are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. So we began to see that that is why it will not be Cain, it will be Abel. It will not be Ishmael, it will be Isaac. It will not be Esau, it will be Jacob. And we've established that the book of Genesis is a book of counter-narratives. Counter-narratives. Alright? Light darkness without form and void darkness then god said light seed of the woman seed of the serpent okay we saw all of those counter narratives opposites in the book of genesis and then we began to look at how that the the the, the, the blessing of god in genesis is not cars and houses the blessing of god in genesis will be the blessing of the office. The office of ministry. The office of ministry. Look at Genesis chapter 27 verse number 33. Mm -mm. Genesis 27 33. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that has taken venison and brought it me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest. And I have blessed him. Yea. And he is blessed. So now we're talking about this blessing. Because God said to Abraham. I will bless you. And through you shall all families of the earth be blessed. And we're tracing this blessing. 
that this blessing is not in material. That this blessing is not intangible. This blessing is intangible or immaterial. That unlike the church world where anytime you talk about blessing, what people are thinking about is cars and houses and all of that. But the blessing of God is that which is irrevocable. The blessing of God does not depreciate in value. The blessing of God is irrevocable. It does not depreciate in value. If it was a car, a car depreciates. If it is a house, houses depreciate. If it is money, Naira right now is almost a thousand Naira to a dollar. All right, euro actually has already, I mean, pounds have passed a thousand Naira to a, to, a, to a pound sterling. So there is depreciation in money. There is depreciation in properties. So the blessing of God cannot be things that depreciate. The blessing of God must be things that are of eternal value. The blessing of God must be things that cannot be corrupted. Brother Peter will say you are called to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away, reserved for you in heaven. So now Isaac was, was you know, Esau was overtaken by Jacob. Jacob went, met the father by the advice of the mother Rebecca and took the blessing of Esau because from the beginning it was prophesied two nations are in your womb and the younger shall rule over the older. And then Esau played it out because when Jacob was hungry, Jacob came to Esau and said, I am hungry. I mean, Esau came to Jacob and said, I am hungry. And Jacob said, well, I have beans. I have porridge. But I will not give you my beans until you give me the birthright. If you agree that I will be firstborn from today and you will be secondborn, you will take my place, I take your place, I will give you porridge. The same thing that was prophesied, Esau made it come to pass. Esau made that prophecy happen because Esau's value system was not well developed. He didn't have right values. The Bible called him a profane person. A profane person is a person of no value. A person does not, that do not value things that should be valued. And so he said, well, what is but right? I am hungry. You are talking of but right. What will I use but right to achieve? Okay, you are the firstborn. I'm the secondborn. No problem. Give me food. And because he had already given out the birthright, there is no way, even if Jacob did not lie, Jacob will have still collected the blessing because he had collected the birthright. Well, of course, we know how it all played out. And uh, the blessing was put on Jacob and not on Esau. And to make you know that the blessing is not in material, that is why when Je I mean, Esau asked the father and said, is there no way you can give me another one or collect it back? The father said, I have blessed him and he is blessed. We don't revoke these things. It's not in physical. If it's physical, we can collect it back. But these are spiritual, spiritual, intangible blessings. Are you still in the building? Now, look at that same Genesis 27, verse 35, 36, and 38. <clears throat> and he said, thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing. And he said, it's not he rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he had taken away my blessing. And he said, has thou not reserved a blessing for me? Look at 38. 38. And Esau said unto his father, has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also. Oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept, because it was too late. The blessing, the impartation, the grace of ministry has been released on Jacob. Are we still in the building? That is why as a child of God, you must never treat, will treat with carelessness spiritual things. Never take for granted an opportunity to serve God and make caricature of it. Never, never, even if you are not feeling good, don't allow your feelings make you misbehave in the presence of God's honor. Don't. Don't because you can lose it and never get it back. You can lose that opportunity to be the person that God will have used in those circumstances and may never get it back.
That's what is happening here. That's what's playing out here. This man is a man of profanity. No value for things of God. Now, please pay attention here. What is the birthright we said? The word birthright, blessing, that word is... Now, remember, you must sit where they sat, hear what they heard to understand what was communicated. When you hear the word birthright and blessing, it deals with functioning in your father's office. Functioning in your father's office. In his inheritance and in his possession. That's the meaning of birthright and blessing. Functioning in your father's office, in his inheritance, and in his pos possession. Now, who is Isaac? The question will be, who is Isaac's father? The father of Isaac is Abraham. Who is Abraham? Abraham was God's spokesperson or God's prophet. So, in their culture, just like we have in our traditional culture, the office of a father or title is passed to his son, usually the first son, like a chief or a king. So usually it's expected that Ishmael will be the one to take the blessing in Abraham's house. Cain will be the one, not Abel. But like I said, the story of Genesis is a story of God's grace and not works. So it has to be Abel, not Cain. It has to be Isaac, not Ishmael. It has to be Jacob, not Esau. What's going on there? Because you see men begin to occupy the office of the prophet. Or become the ministers of God's word in the earth. That is the birthright. To answer the call of God to ministry is to receive the birthright of Jesus. Naturally, it should fall to Esau. But that's not how it works. It works by grace. By grace. Not by strength. Not by rights. So it falls on Jacob, not Esau. Now you know, like I said in the first service, people have thought it was about money, but this is not money. We are talking about spiritual realities here. We are talking about the real deal. Can somebody shout hallelujah? You know, um, this guy was the one who went, this guy Esau was the one who went and married from where he was asked not to marry. Because he didn't care about spiritual things. So the blessing there refers to that office. The office of preaching the gospel. The office that God gave Abraham, that Abraham is blessed to be a blessing until all the families of the earth are blessed. Look at Genesis 28 verse 4. Genesis chapter 28 verse number 4. And give the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee. Now thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger. Which God gave unto Abraham. Which God gave unto Abraham. So it's the blessing of Abraham. That same blessing. Take these scriptures down for further study at home. Genesis 33, 11. <clears throat> Genesis 33, 11. Genesis 39, verse 5. Genesis 39, verse 5. Look at Genesis 49, 25. Give me that one. Genesis 49, 25. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee? And by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above? Blessings of the deep that lieth under. Blessings of the breast and of the womb. Next verse. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. Unto the uttermost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. The blessing that was passed to Joseph, talking to Joseph. He is blessing Joseph like Joseph is the firstborn. Reuben ought to be the firstborn. Reuben ought to be the one to get this blessing. But don't forget the story of Genesis is the story of grace and not works. Reuben ought to be the firstborn because look at it. That same Genesis 49 verse 4. Genesis 49 verse number 4. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Look at verse 3 so you know who he's talking to. Genesis 49 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Next verse. 
but as unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my court. You can't do this job, Reuben. Reuben, you have defiled and disqualified yourself from this job. You cannot. This is a spiritual tax. So, it is given to Joseph. Look at that Genesis chapter 49 verse 26. Please pay attention. Genesis 49 verse 26. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. Unto the uttermost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. 27. 27. Benjamin shall ravin as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey. And at night he shall divide the spoil. 28. Verse 28. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. So the speaking was via a message. He spoke unto them and blessed them. Put it up and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. <clears throat> Who was well there? Joseph or his father Jacob? In terms of material wealth. Joseph. Joseph was wealthier than Jacob. But who blessed who? Jacob blessed Joseph. So the blessing is not material. Because if the blessings were material, Joseph should bless Jacob. Hello? It's the one that has the blessing that should bless the junior. You know, honey, I was watching Kanye West. Kanye West. Kanye West is going through all kinds of things. We keep praying for him. God will help him. Bring him to the full knowledge of Christ and stabilize his life. You didn't say amen to that. Yeah, we pray for them. Pray for them. Also, this week I found myself praying for some of these people. Praying for Davido. For God's comfort, God's peace. These people are going through hell and high water. You know, it's time to pray for them. That even in the midst of all this, the gospel will reach them. In clearer terms. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. So Kanye West has been going through a lot of stuff in America. And then they, I watched an interview he gave to one of the uh, one of the presenters in America and the guy was trying to advise Kanye West. So Kanye West gave him savage. He just said to him, excuse me please, how much are you worth in dollars? He's talking to the presenter. How much are you worth in dollars? He said, I, I know I'm not as worth as you. He said, then I think you should be quiet. Let me speak. Because there's nothing you can offer me. But I have everything you need. So you shut up. Let me do the talking. That's savage. That's savage. That's a billionaire talking maybe to a thousand year. He said, you shut up. Don't talk to me. Don't tell me how to live. Because if you know how to live, you'll be richer than I am. So you keep, keep quiet. Let me do the talking. And you can see the authority with which he spoke. It was not a makeup authority. It was not like somebody was trying to prove a point. The guy was just speaking as a natural truth. You shut up. How much are you worth? Let me do the talking. Don't tell me how to live because if you know how to live better than me, it will show. What took me there now? Jacob and Joseph. If the blessing was material, Joseph should bless Jacob. But because it's not immaterial, that's why it is Jacob who blesses Joseph. Are we teaching here? Some of you are richer than me. I shouldn't be the one blessing you if it's material. But because it's not material, it's intangible, it's spiritual. That's why I'm your pastor. If you don't say amen to that, I will get on your case. You think it's a joke to be your pastor? You think it's a joke to be your pastor? Eh? Neighbor. <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. In fact, it was Joseph who bailed out Jacob. You remember during the famine? Which means the blessing is a spiritual impartation and ordination. So it's not money at all. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20. Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 20. By faith... Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. 
When Hebrews 11 says things to come, that is the Messiah's coming. The coming of the Messiah. Concerning things to come. So here we have people who ought to function for God's grace. Which means the blessing to be a blessing therefore is to function in the grace of God for ministry. Blessed to be a blessing means to function in the grace of God for ministry. Blessed to be a blessing. To function in an office. What is the function to be? It's to multiply in the earth. Not to multiply children, but to multiply the seed of God. To multiply the seed of God. That is in the blessedness of Abraham. To multiply the seed of God that is in the blessedness of Abraham. Genesis 17, 16 and 19. Give me that. Genesis chapter 17 verse 16 and 19. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Give me verse 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Is it Isaac or Isaac? And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. So can you see, Abraham is blessed to be a blessing. But the blessing will find expression through Isaac. And from Isaac there will be a multiplication. Are we teaching here? So it's not just bearing children biologically, it's the preaching of the gospel and bringing men to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Look at also Genesis 22 verse 17. Genesis 22 verse 17. That in blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the land which is upon, uh, as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. He's referring here to the blessedness of the discipleship of the nations. The blessedness of the discipleship of the nations. God has mandated us to disciple nations. Raise people in nations that will preach the gospel and shine the light of God. Raise people in different nations all over the world. Through the preaching of the gospel. The salvation of the whole earth. Genesis 1.26. That was the original plan. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over all the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 28. And God blessed them. 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. This is not biological. This is the preaching of the gospel. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Are you still here? So he has blessed them and said be fruitful. Now. You don't, you don't start something. Then you say subdue and replenish. If you're going to subdue and replenish, it means it was there before, it went out of order, and you're bringing it back to order. Which means, Genesis 1, 26 to 28, is the story of redemption. God's redemptive story. Which means, therefore, that all the prophets, all the prophets, they spoke things, things concerning God's plan. You will hear that the whole earth shall be filled. With the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Is that the blessing of Abraham? Huh? The whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Is it the same thing with blessed to be a blessing until all the families of the earth are blessed? So that is the function of the gospel in the earth. That is the function of the gospel in the earth. How is it going to happen? Don't forget where we started from. It starts in a seed. And so, the Genesis seed is who? The son of God, Christ himself. He will fall to the earth. And he will bring forth fruit after his kind. So, the seed, 
the earth and then the increase. The seed, the earth and then the increase. Genesis 8, 22. Please stay with me. Genesis 8, verse number 22. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. We look at that in this series, seed time and harvest. So which means for us to cover the earth, which is God's plan, what is the blessing of Abraham? Is the blessing of Abraham to cover all the earth? Huh? Is the blessing of Abraham to cover all the earth? With the gospel. All the earth. Last week I got an email from Fiji Islands. Somebody wrote, says I've been following your teachings for years. Now I am ready. I want to start a lighthouse, a power city campus in Fiji Islands. And I forwarded him to our training department so they can train him and equip me. We have people sending mails from all over the nations. Countries that we never dreamt we will ever have churches. But the gospel is reaching. The gospel is permeating. The other day I got an email from Mama's Village. Mama's Village. Right? Her own village where I married her from. Somebody wrote, I've been following. I am so blessed. Please keep preaching the gospel. Few weeks from now, I'll be back in my village. I'm going to my village with a conference. The village where I came from biologically. Because they are following. They've even started a power city in my village. Through the preaching of the gospel. So God is not only using us to bless people from other places. He is also raising people right from where we came biologically to preach this same gospel. Somebody is not shouting amen here. We have people coming from everywhere. We'll be in Cameroon very soon. Power City campuses are springing up all over Cameroon. All over Kenya. All over South Africa. All over Ghana. All over Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia. They are just springing up everywhere. The Americas, the United Kingdom, Asia, India, Japan. Campuses opening up everywhere. The message is blessed to be a blessing. Unto all the families of the earth. Are blessed. Come close. Come close. Come close. Come close. They say I'm a heretic. <laughs> zoomy, zoomy. They say I'm a heretic. But they can't stop listening to me. <laughs> Come close. Come close. They say, Dr. Damina is heretic. He's preaching heresy. But they keep following. You know why? What I'm preaching has addictive ability. And you know, when you are addicted, you'll be doing it even though you don't like it. <laughs> you'll be doing it even though you don't like it. So, he's a heretic. Let's see what he's saying. Heresy! Let's see what he's saying. <laughs> It's a new day. This is the day of Jesus. Oh, I tell you, man. This is the day of Jesus Christ. And we preach him from nation to nation, from continent to continent, because the birthright and the blessing is blessed to be a blessing until all the families of the earth be blessed. I didn't hear a powerful amen. I'm not hearing that amen at all. Yesterday, Pastor Priest called me last night when I got back home, and he says, Papa, come close. <laughs> I didn't know that Pastor Prince was watching. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, to reach all nations. And this is a counter narrative of the Tower of Babel. If you are not in the first service, you don't know what I'm talking about. Get the material, it will help you understand the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, multiple worship of gods, multiple worship of idols. What is God's solution? God's solution to idol worship is the blessing of Abraham. God's solution to idol worship is the message of the gospel. 
Genesis chapter 11 means man's creation. Man's self-worship. Genesis 12 is the gospel. So there's counter-narrative. Genesis 11, idol worship, the Tower of Babel. Genesis 12, the call of God to preach the gospel until all nations are blessed. So the gospel, therefore, will unify. The day of Pentecost gives a purview of that. Where people came and they find out 120 people spoke a language. No one understood in the flesh. One single language was spoken. And they said, we are confounded. What are you talking about? Anyone believes the gospel and is filled with the Holy Ghost. And all of us, hey! And we didn't go to school for it. One language, one spirit, one God, not multiple gods, one God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, counter narrative the Tower of Bible, Babel came together in mixture of worship of God. Genesis 11. Then Genesis 12, God brought out his own unity. Unity through the gospel that brings the same spirit and the same language. Am I teaching good? Yeah. Same spirit, one language, preaching the gospel of Christ. So, for God's will to come to pass, the seed must be planted. How is this going to happen? We have explained that in Psalm 78 verse 2. He says, I will speak to them. Psalm 78 verse 2. Put it up quickly so that I quote it right. 78 verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Parables and dark sayings. That is how the blessing will come. It will first come through parables and dark sayings. Matthew 13, 44. <clears throat> Matthew 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man had found, he hid it, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had, and buyeth that field. 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls goodly pearls the kingdom of heaven all the parables of jesus were about himself luke 24 44 luke chapter 24 verse number 44 these are the words which i spake unto you while i was yet with you that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophet and in the Psalms, destination concerning me. So the parable of the sower, which is our focus today, is the parable of Jesus. The parable of the sower is the parable of Jesus. How will Genesis 1, 26 to 28 happen? Again, let's repeat it. The seed has to be planted. And it has to grow and multiply. The seed has to be planted and it has to grow and multiply. So which means that the will of God in the earth is to have multiplied sons. Multiplied Christs. Is that it? Huh? Multiplied light. Huh? Multiplied glory of God. Huh? Multiplied salvation. Who cannot carry this office? Question. Can Esau carry this office? Huh? Can Esau carry this office? So anyone that is an Esau cannot carry this office. Someone who despises church meetings. Someone who despises house fellowship is an Esau. Someone who misses Sunday school 
is an Esau. Someone who dodges evangelism and raising disciples is an Esau. He's a man of profanity. Someone who avoids prayer crews cannot be your friend. Why? He's an Esau. Esau and Jacob cannot walk together. Esau and Jacob cannot be together. Because the focus of Jacob is not the focus of Esau. The values of Jacob are not the values of Esau. Who is Esau? Someone who despises holy things. Can he carry this office? No. Someone who doesn't listen to instructions. Can he carry this office? No. Someone whose speech is loose. Can he carry this office? No. Someone who has no respect for holy things. Can he carry this office? No. So let's see. In the parable of the sower, we have four soils. Four. Four soils. In the parable of the sower. So for God's will to come to pass in the earth, number one, we need a seed. For God's will to come to pass in the earth, number one, we need a seed. Number two, we need the earth as well. In Matthew chapter 13, the first soil is wayside. The sower soweth and some seed fell by the wayside. Another one fell on hard ground. Matthew 13 verse 5. Give me verse 5. Mm -mm. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and fought with the sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Next verse. And when the sun was up, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away so verse 5 is where the seed was sown but it was not received by faith no deepness of earth look at Matthew 13 verse 7 and 8 13 verse 7 and 8 and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them verse 8 but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. So we have four grounds in the earth. Now, the one by the wayside means he didn't understand what we were teaching. Every time we are teaching, he's not understanding. Why? He is distracted. He doesn't engage his mind in reasoning out the things we are communicating. He is docile. His, his mind is lazy. He cannot engage or he is distracted. So as the seed is coming, it is not able to penetrate because he has no understanding. Those are wayside people. Those are the people in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 to 4. In whom the God of this world, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Next verse. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Their minds are blind because they believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the first soil, he blinds their thinking. They have no understanding. The second soil is the one on the hard ground. And the characteristic of that soil is excitement. 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 You are teaching, instead of them to take notes and be thinking through, they are looking at me and they are shouting, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. They are so excited. I'm saying something before I arrive, you shout, Rema, Rema, Rema. You can't be talking while I'm talking and you're hearing me. It's either I'm talking, you're quiet and listening. Or you're talking while I'm talking and you're missing what I am saying. And when you miss what I'm saying, 
It won't enter you. Then the Bible says, these people, when persecution and affliction arise for the world's sake, because this same word you are hearing will attract persecution. The message, when it enters you, it will attract affliction. It will attract persecution. And then the brother's hopes are dashed. He was told he will be a millionaire in Christ. And then he came to Christ. He's not even a hundred near. They say she fast. He fasted. They say she sow seed. He sowed seed. He even sold his shoes to sow. And he's trekking without shoes. So that God will make him a millionaire. If God makes people millionaires, then God is behind all the troubles in the world. If God makes people millionaires, then God is the brain behind global crisis. I dealt with that in the first service, right? It means God is the inventor of class in the society. So God selected some people in the society and made them millionaires so that they can be the one given to the poor people. So there's class. So God has classified humanity. Millionaires and paupers. Then God is blessing millionaires so they can be dashing small, small to the poor. That God must be a very wicked God. But I have news for you. God does not give anybody wealth. God created an enabling environment and put all that man will need to use to make money and walked out of that side and focused on salvation. Salvation is for everybody. But millionaire, thousandaire, Hondrenia, you make the choice of which class you want to belong by the activities you engage in. Develop skills. Go to school. Get a mentor. Be an apprentice. If the skills you have are no more marketable, drop them and develop a new set of skills. Go with the times. Find what the times are saying in the market. What is selling? If you are not equipped for it, go and develop it. Enter the marketplace and occupy space. Everybody is not struggling. May God give you understanding. Everybody is not struggling. It's not because you so see that you are prospering. It's because your brain went to school. You have the right kind of skills that are needed. It's not everybody. And you don't have to be a Christian to succeed in the secular world. You just need to know what to do. So what does God do for us? He gave us Jesus. What did Jesus come to do? Save his people from their sin. Case closed. What about money? He makes the sun to shine on the good and on the bad. He gave us enabling environment. Picture it like this. God built a city called the earth. Put diamonds, gold, oil wells. Put agriculture. Put commerce. Put industry. Created all that man will need. Drop all the raw materials that man can use to make anything. Then give man an idea of how to use them. Then God walked out of the place and focused on salvation. So you are born into this planet. It is now your responsibility to go and find out what to do and how to engage. Whether you are a Christian, a pagan, or an idol worshiper is level playing ground. That's why you don't have to be in church to be rich. You don't have to know God to be rich. Why do you know God? You know God to be saved. You know God so that you and God can have a relationship where he can father you, where you have peace, you have eternity on your inside. I'm teaching good. If what I'm saying is annoying you, there is a spirit called greed living inside you. <laughs> you need deliverance. You need what? Deliverance. Not deliverance. Deliverance is salvation. Deliverance is the one they will tell you to roll on the floor. Bring bottle of oil. Don't wear socks when coming. Pour salt on your head. And then take some cube of sugar and rub all over your leg. So that anywhere you enter, it will be sweet in you. And then you forget that ants will follow you. And ants will be chasing you wherever you go. <laughs> Pour powder on your face. 
Take anointing oil, touch your eyebrows. It is called oil of favor. Somebody will slap you for coming to his office like a masquerade. Those native doctors on suit calling themselves pastors. Come close. <laughs> Glory. Glory! I heard you. Say, Papa likes trouble. Yes, I like trouble. <laughs> Only people that like trouble can preach what I'm preaching. <laughs> <laughs> so they told him that when you come to Christ, you'll be a millionaire. He came to Christ, not even a hundred years. So he's angry. That person was never saved because he didn't come to Christ for Christ. He came to Christ for money and money does not save. And after sowing seed, sowing seed, seed of favors, overtaking seed, speed, seed of speed, seed of sack my boss, seed of fire my landlord. <laughs> and nothing happened. Then he was that saying, Jesus is not the only way. <laughs> The guy was not saved because the word of God did not have root in him. So when persecution begins to come for the word's sake, he's offended. Then there's a third guy in verse 22. He received the seed, but he received it among tongues. He had the word of God. But the chaos of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word. And then he becomes unfruitful. They choke the word. In Mark chapter 4 verse 7, Mark chapter 4 verse 19, and Luke chapter 8 verse 14. I repeat, Mark chapter 4 verse 7, Mark chapter 4 verse 19, and Luke chapter 8 verse 14. They choke the word. The word choke is a Greek word, sunfigo. S-U-N-P-N-I-G-O. Sunfigo. Sunfigo. It means to strangulate. To cause the word not to bear fruit. To choke. To strangle it. Now that word choke doesn't mean to die. It means to, to, to disallow the word. To, to, to stop the word from functioning. To make the word not function. Luke 8 40, 42. Put it up for me. Luke chapter 8 verse 42. <clears throat> Are you still here? Look at, for he had one and only daughter about 12 years of age and she lay a dying but as he went, the people throng him. It's not allowed to function. So he now says, because of that, it becomes unfruitful. The word unfruitful is the word akapos in the Greek. A-K-A-R-P-O-S. Akapos. A-K-A-R. A-K-A-R-P-O-S. Which means he is born again but he's not bearing fruit. He is born again, but he's not winning souls. No evangelism. And what is God's blessing? Be fruitful and multiply. The word fruitful, does it mean have more businesses? What's the meaning of the word fruitful? Evangelize. Make disciples. Multiply the seed in the earth and bear fruit. You'll find that word used in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. He said, my understanding is unfruitful. That is, my understanding is not bearing fruit. Ephesians 5, 11, It is called unfruitful works of darkness. Unfruitful works of darkness. Titus 3, 14. Titus, put it up, 3, 14. To, and let Ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. Second Peter 1 18. Last scripture for it. And this voice which came down from heaven, we have heard when we we're with him on the holy mount. So when he is unfruitful, why is he unfruitful? Deceitfulness of riches deceitfulness of riches the lust of other things there are some of you listening to me right now that's why you have no fruit you are in this church but you cannot turn around and show me two three four people that you brought and have discipled and are doing well you have no fruit 
Why do you have no fruit? Because you are a victim of the deceitfulness of riches. The lust of other things. You're always pursuing money. You miss church services. You have an appointment. You have a business deal. You have an appointment. You have a business deal. You're just pursuing things. I have an appointment. I have a business deal. Did you say how well, is it? Where is it? It's so good for me. I am in the supermarket. I'm going to be sitting in the supermarket. You're chasing, chasing deceitfulness of riches. So because of that, it chokes the word of God you are hearing here. So you are not producing fruit. The deceitfulness of riches. You keep chasing money till you die. So why don't you pause, leave it, and do other things that are important? And I've even discovered when people chase money too much, they don't see it. When people relax and go about life easy, they see the money. I've discovered, I've been around though. I've been around. I've been around. Just a few days now. I've been around. Because I'm just beginning. Age is still on my side. Let me go and make money first. Let me go and make money. Let me go make money, money, money. Say so one day you, we say one day you will be saying money, money. I need you no more. <laughs> you know this all? No, we used to sing it back. You be saying money, money. I need you no more. Another money, another money in Jesus. That is, you'll be saying, I don't need you money because by that time, Jesus will have come and the money will be useless. A time comes when you'll say, money, I don't need you. <laughs> I need you no more. <laughs> Some say, my business is my ministry. My business is my ministry. You are a product of bad pastoring. <laughs> you know some people say my career is my ministry my career is my ministry meanwhile Abraham's career was not his ministry when God called Abraham to a land he will show him he already had a career he had business God didn't say that your business is the career God said come, come leave that side to a place I will show you your career cannot be your ministry Isaac was a, had a career, but his career was not his ministry. Moses had a career, but his career was not his ministry. Luke was a medical doctor. He never called his doctor in his ministry. He had a ministry to serve the purpose of God. What of Paul? Paul was a tent maker. He never called his tent making ministry. He, he said, I count tent making and, and religion as dung to pursue the call of God. It is a high calling in Christ Jesus. What about Aquila and Priscilla? They were tent makers. They never called their career their ministry. Your career is not your ministry. Your career is your desire. Your career is your desire. Your career is your choice. God didn't tell you, my son, my son, go and read medical science. You just stood up and was attracted and fascinated by medical doctors as you were growing. And you desired to be a doctor. So when you went to the school, opportunity for doctoring appeared, you cashed in on it. Some of you grew up admiring lawyers, admiring drivers, admiring other professions. That driver that used to drive pickup and pass your father's house early in the morning, ah, one day I will be like this driver. So as you grew, your pursuit was to be a driver. You went to driving school, your own is better. So we first learned our own in the house. Your own, at least you went to school, you learned how to drive, they gave you a certificate. You have a certification as a certified driver. <laughs> Don't laugh at you. Drivers, they game on you. <laughs> Some of you mechanic. You saw one mechanic that used to have a mechanic workshop near your father's house. Every time you see them pack fine, fine cars and he will be the one carrying a screwdriver and opening fine, fine cars. He say, I like this kind of work where you just see fine car and dismantle it. I will live my life dismantling and coupling cars. So today you have a mechanic workshop. That is not your ministry. That is your desire. Like some of you now are eyeing politics. You are liking politics. Okay? So that's your desire. Ministry is a rude interruption in the affairs of your life. Something you didn't plan. Something you didn't desire. As you begin to grow in the knowledge of Christ, suddenly, ministry comes alive. 
Honey, you know, I was telling Pastor Matthew, I said to Pastor Matthew, when we were in Inugu, I said, Pastor Math, I'm sure five, six, seven, eight years ago, you never dreamt you would be in this walk. He said, yes, Papa. I said, you were busy doing your own thing. You were, and then he said to me, Papa, I'm telling you, I wonder why I answered that your phone call. Because I remember that day, I just called him, I said, hey, Brother Matthew. He said, yes, Papa. We need to start a campus in Abuja. Because then he has started showing up. He came to the few meetings I did in Abuja. And I took note of him. He wasn't obvious. But I could tell there's something in this guy. I took note of him. We got his number. And we started discussing. I said, Pastor Matthew, we need to start a, a campus in Abuja. He went quiet. He said, yes, Papa. I said, all right, quickly. Get the details of everybody that's attended the conference. Call them. This is the date. Begin to mobilize. Tell them we're coming to launch the campus. Mama and I were in Abuja. Went to that hall that evening and saw the few people that came. All of them were on fire and delighted. And we launched Abuja campus. Today the rest is history. Pastor Matthew is the one now going all over the world. Training people, raising people, opening campuses, mobilizing. This is somebody that before didn't have time for ministry. He was a mammon chaser. He was just pursuing his money, making money, doing businesses, making money, doing businesses. Today, he's still doing business, but greater part of his time, he's with me all the time. Papa, how are we launching this campus? Papa, I'm training this group of people. Another group of people have come. We need to train them. We're going to this place. Now he's all over the world. He's hardly back at home. He's always traveling with me. That is how God interrupts people's lives. You're doing your own thing and God just steps in. My son, I need you here. So you downplay on this and pursue the plan of God. You don't close it down because you still need that money to do the work. Am I teaching God? Yeah, that's how God calls people. Many of you in this church right now, God has interrupted your lives. True or false? I'm not hearing you. Okay, I know those that are not answering. The interruption has not come. You are still pursuing money, money. If it doesn't come, it will come. That interruption will still come. Whether you say amen or not. Except you are not a member of this church. I can't be teaching you like this and you are not bringing fruit. That bringing fruit to the kingdom of God is ministry. God will always interrupt people. And may you not say no to God's interruption. Because then your life will be meaningless. What brings meaning to your life is that interruption. When God interrupts your life. Your life has become very precious. That God himself had to interrupt it. God has brought value to you. The interruption of God to your life is God bringing value. And bringing relevance. Because now you start impacting. You start helping people. You start advancing the purpose of God. I didn't hear a powerful amen. So why are you not bearing fruit? Because of the deceitfulness of riches. Lust and cares of this life. Let's go for evangelism. You say when? We say Saturday. You say, ah, there are three weddings I'm attending. Three weddings. Meanwhile, you're not the bridesmaid. You are not the groomsman. You are not the officiating minister. Neither are you the in-law or outlaw. You are just one of those that will eat rice. Saturday, at least, you will have nothing less than six plates of rice. It will cover your feeding for next week. So you go to the first wedding. You pick one, two, three plates. You have finished wedding. You go to the next one. You wait for eating time. If they are wasting time, you say, have they started reception here? Let me know when I should go there first before here. Then you gather the food. You go home and write on top. Monday meal, Tuesday meal, Wednesday meal. Are you the one wedding? You go to people's wedding and snap picture more than them. You go to wedding and dress more than the lady. So when two of you stand, we don't, we don't know whether she's the one or you're the one. You wear a suit that is bigger than the one that is wedding. Now we don't know who is the man getting married. You have a wedding ministry. Wedding planner. Planning without pay. So I say, this wedding, this is how we shall plan it. But you can't plan to win souls. You are, you are not the one growing. You have choked yourself with personal desires, riches of this world. The seed of God is in you because you are born again. And you know the seed of God is in you. You are born of God. 
You must be fruitful. You are blessed, but you are walking in the course. You are blessed, but you are walking in the course. Why are you walking in the course? Because you refuse for God to interrupt your life. You refuse for God to take a good part of your life and use it for his glory. What is the cause? The cause is that unfruitfulness. You are blessed because you are born again. But you are walking in the cause. You have not allowed the word of God for an expression. So your, your conviction to God and his word is born out of convenience. You do it when there is time. When there is no time, God, you know there are more things more important than you. So wait when I have time. I will give you my time. Many times people are only active because there is no lust of this world yet. Many don't even know what to use their time for. They can create time, but they have no honor for God. And they have no honor for the things of God. I'm saying, you know that our church, Kai, there are so many services in that our church. Huh? How many services do we have a week in this church? Two services and only on Sundays. Listen, you have 168 hours, 168 hours in a week. 168 hours in a week. You have 168 hours in a week. Church service, maybe six hours on Sunday. First service and second service. For demand that attends two services. If it's just one service, you only have three hours. Prayer cruise, three hours. That's six hours. Let's say you attended house service, house church. Max, three hours. That's nine hours. Let's say you engage in follow-up and evangelism. Three hours. That's 12 hours. Remove 12 hours from 168 hours. And you are still grudging. Your greed does not have part two. <laughs> you have 168 hours in a week. When you fully attend all we do in this church. It's only 12 hours in a week. And you are still grudging. 168 hours. You only gave God 12 And some of you don't even give up to three. Because you come to service late and you leave before we close. Once I say close your eyes, you have closed your life. <laughs> Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let me repeat the analysis. 168 hours in a week. God, that is when you are fully committed to evangelism, three hours, house church, three hours, prayer cruise, three hours, and Sunday service. Eh? Three hours. Three hours, because many of you come for one service only. But even if you attend two services, six hours maximum. So six, six, and three. Fifteen hours. When you attend all. Plus three extra hours for your own evangelism. It's 15 hours. You have 168 hours. In a whole week. And you're still grudging. You're still grudging. You still have 150 something hours to yourself. The lust of this world. It will choke the world. And you are not bringing forth fruit. Some say you know I am an apostle in the marketplace. You are not an apostle in the marketplace. You are a businessman in the marketplace. The only apostle that you are in the marketplace. Is when we go for evangelism to market. And as we are doing evangelism in the market from shop to shop, that is apostle in the marketplace. Not that you have a kiosk in the market and you are selling fufu and crayfish. And you say, I'm an apostle in the marketplace. Apostle over what? Fufu? Fufu apostle? 
or crayfish? What, what is happening with crayfish? We talk crayfish first service, crayfish second service. Eh? It's rising high. <laughs> it's bad voices, people are not normal. What is doing you people? I go to Abuja, they are very abnormal in power voices. I come home where I should have peace. You people refuse to give me peace here. <laughs> so crayfish is rising high. <laughs> are you serious? Oh my goodness, what about Umfi? <laughs> Glory! You know, international audience, they don't know Mfi. When you come for homecoming, we'll give you the interpretation. For now, that's Greek. Mfi is Greek. Go and check Greek lexicon. <laughs> Inficentesis. <laughs> is this power voice? Please don't talk again. Eh? Eh? Oh, you're following? No, you overtook me now. <laughs> now you have updated me that crayfish is rising in height, in price, and uh, in fees also rising. Fufunko. Eh? In fees, happily married. <laughs> You see these people? <laughs> I tell you, these guys, praise God. You are not an apostle in the marketplace. Some say, I'm an apostle in the office. You wear a suit and you are analyzing business and you say you're an apostle. Apostle means you are preaching the gospel. You're preaching the gospel. How do I grow? Number one is to sow the seed. Sow the seed. The seed is Christ. So which means spiritual growth is to multiply Christ through me. Spiritual growth is the multiplication of Christ through me. I repeat. Spiritual growth is the multiplication of Christ through me. And how does it happen? Matthew 4, 19. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Put it up quickly. I need the brother on the computer. Matthew 4, 19. And he saith unto them... Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Mark 1 17. Look at what it says in Mark chapter 1 verse 17. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. It says follow me. It doesn't mean come behind me, no. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Look at Luke chapter 5 verse 10. Luke chapter 5 verse number 10. It says, And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto, the, unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So from fishermen to a man catcher. Because fishermen is career. Catching men is ministry. They are not the same. From henceforth, you will catch men. Helios Anthropos means you will catch men alive. You will catch men alive. So your spiritual growth is measured by your ministry. Your spiritual growth is measured by your ministry. Your ministry is the measure of your spiritual growth. If you are active in ministry, you are growing. If you are not in ministry, you are not growing because you are not bearing fruit. Your spiritual growth is measured by your service. Your degree of service. Because if the seed of spiritual growth is Christ, and Christ is a servant, then you measure spiritual growth by service. Again. Because if the seed of spiritual growth is Christ, and Christ is a servant, then you measure your spiritual growth, therefore, 
by service. Your spiritual growth is not measured by your success in your career. But success in your career is not evil. Your spiritual growth is not measured by your marriage and having triplets as children. It's good to marry and have children. Your spiritual growth is not measured by how healthy you are in your body. Unbelievers get healthy that they even live for 120 years crying and begging God for them to die. Say, oh God, I want to die. I'm tired. There are some people at 90, 9500. If you tell them you will live long, they will tell you, Uwaka, I want to go. They're tired. So it's a good thing, but it's not, the, it's not spiritual growth. Your spiritual growth is how much of Jesus we are seeing in your life. How much of Jesus? Let's answer a few questions as we gradually close this series. Why am I not growing? Can we say, I am not growing because I am not following Jesus? Yes. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So if you are not following Jesus, you cannot be a fisher of men. You cannot be involved in evangelism and raising disciples. I'm not growing because I'm not allowing the seed of the word of God to grow. Question. Can I have a spiritual life without the preaching of the gospel? Huh? No. Can I have a spiritual life without serving the body of Christ? No. Can I have a spiritual life without being a good example? No. Can I have a spiritual life Without a prayer life? No. Not prayer for your needle. Not prayer for needs. Not once did we see Jesus pray for his own needs. Not once. Some people pray a lot, but we know the focus of their prayer. Fall and die. The prayers are very wicked. And God doesn't answer such prayers because God only answers prayers that are a reflection of his character. Some people only want to hear the voice of God when it comes to marital issues. Say, please, I want to know the will of God. They have never looked for the will of God before. Now they want to marry. I want to know the will of God. You start knowing the will of God from why am I alive? That's where you start from. Then you, you follow that will of God. So when it comes to marriage, you don't have to look for it will just flow like the other ones flowed. The wrong place to look for the will of God is in marriage. Because by that time, you have already developed independence in making choice. You never depended on God for anything. It's now you want to marry. And the only reason why you ask for will of God is because the man before was will of God. But there's a way he behaved to your mother last week. You say, I don't know. Is he the will of God? Is he the will of God? So why you ask? He said, the way he treated my mother last week, I don't know. Is he the will of God? So if you didn't treat your mother and the will of God, see your head. Why are you not developing? Because you're not following Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 9 verse 57. Mm, teaching good. Luke 9 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. The first test of spiritual growth is comfort. Do you worship your comfort? If it's not comfortable, you will never do it. You can never grow spiritually. Before Papa said church was 8 o'clock, I was even struggling with 8 o'clock. Now he has made it 7 o'clock. How shall I cope? How shall I cope? Well, you can join night club. Maybe you will cope with that one. Nightclub. Bugao. Maybe you will cope with that. <laughs> Why are all of you doing me like this? <laughs> come close, come close. <laughs> Is Bugao a sin? Uh, did I come in sin? I said Bugao. 
okay, if you don't know what it is, why are you doing me like this? <laughs> so all of us are partners in Christ. <laughs> I don't want to be a mechanic. If you don't get it, Somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, I like the way you preach. You're always laughing because what you're preaching is good news. He said, the church I attend in Zambia, the pastor is always angry. You must do it. <laughs> if you don't do it, God will come for you. <laughs> there are pastors that can never laugh at the pulpit. Jesus is coming soon. The soul that sinner shall die. Your sin shall find you out. Your sins shall find you out. You think God is joking? He's coming after you. <laughs> if you go to that kind of church, young people are not there. Because young people don't like threats. But the gospel is good news. With joy, we draw water out of the wells of salvation. Somebody shout glory! Amen. Are we happy? Can see now let me finish this service so you don't push me longer than now. Do you worship your comfort? If it's not comfortable, you never do it. You can never grow spiritually because as long as you're looking for comfort, you can't grow. If you're going to grow, it will discomfort you. In fact, the name another name for growth is discomfort. That's another name for growth. Is discomfort because if you're going to grow at all, you must move out of the comfortable zone into an own. It will stretch you. Growth will take you out of your comfort zone. So if you're going to grow spiritually, you must be ready to be discomforted. In Mark chapter 10, when Jesus spoke to the rich man, sell all you have and give to the poor. Follow me. The disciples said, Lord, we have left all to follow you. We have left houses and wives. He didn't mean they divorced too. They have left means they traveled and left their wives at home. So they will come back to them. Okay. It means they have put God as a priority above wife and house and property. Another place, you, you, you know, another thing you place above the gospel is an idol. The only thing that you serve in place of God is an idol. In Luke chapter 9, the guy said, I will follow you. Jesus said, are you sure you can, can come? He said, yes. Then he said, Bob, Bob, you know, let me go and bury my father first. Jesus said, okay. Let the dead bury their dead. And the man followed Jesus. You go and preach the gospel. How many of us can go for evangelism with pain? Something just happened that disorganized you. And you still carry your Bible to go for evangelism. Something just happened that hurt you. And you still went to minister to your disciple. How many? Years ago, my daughter was kidnapped. We were talking about it with mama the other day. They kidnapped her that morning. And that afternoon, I was to go to Eket for crusade. I was in pain. I was in pain. I was totally disorganized. My own human being. That I have to be responsible and accountable for has been taken away from me by people I don't know and where they took her to. The only thing I know is that they called and said, well, with your child, you have to send us so so an amount of money. I don't even have that kind of money. We prayed with mama and prayed. I told mama, enter the car. All of you enter the car. We're going to a cat for crusade. We drove to a cat. Drove to a cat as if nothing happened. I came out of the car, grabbed the microphone, blasted that crusade, got people saved. Minister to people like nothing has happened. Enter the car. We drove back. On the way back, it came back again. Oh, go back and pray it. And he didn't stop me from ministry. Why? Because my loyalty first is to Jesus. I love my child. I love my child. I love my family. I love them. But all of us are in this together. All of us have decided to prioritize God in our lives. We went and preached. Came back. And after seven days, my child was sent back home. The point I'm making is, can you preach in pain? Because ministry, ministry will demand your commitment in and out of season. 
When you are well and when you are not well. Sickness, in fact, they say that the mention of sickness that should not be an excuse for you not to preach. I have preached on this pulpit to all of you with malaria, heavy malaria. Such that if you touch my body, you will become warm. That is, you brought your cold hand and touched me. Within seconds, you yourself will start sweating. And I stood here and taught you the word of God and ministered to you as if nothing. Because this ministry is in and out of season. This is the only thing that will outlive this life into eternity. You must be that sold out. So we have left everything and followed you. What shall we gain? Jesus said you will gain a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. Ministry. Until you get involved with ministry, you are not growing spiritually. The proof of spiritual growth is measured by service, by ministry, by preaching the gospel. If I'm teaching good, can I have a good amen? amen. Spiritual growth is when I overcome comfort for ministry. When I overcome comfort for ministry. It's when I carry pain and sorrows and yet obey God. When I carry pain and sorrows and yet obey God. Another guy said, let me go and tell my friends. <laughs> Jesus said, whoever puts his hands on the plow and looks back is not fit. So three things. Number one, comfort. You must pass the comfort test for you to be fruitful. You must pass the comfort test for you to be fruitful. Number two, pain, sorrow, lack of expectation. Where things you are expecting didn't come out and you decided in spite of the disappointment, I'm still committed to Christ. In spite of the disappointment, I'm still committed to Christ. Number three, you must pass the test of human approval. Whether people approve of me or not, I'm sold out to ministry. Whether people approve of me or not, I am sold out to serve the purpose of God. When he was done, he chose 70 of them who were willing to pass the test and he sent them out to preach. He says, go and preach. Take up your cross. Come and go. If your life is not for the preaching of the gospel, you are not growing. If your life is not for the preaching of the gospel, you are not growing spiritually. Every week you should be available to evangelize and raise disciples. And if you are not doing that, you are not growing. You dedicate yourself to spiritual growth. Don't worship your job. Don't worship your money. Don't worship your age. Don't worship your status. Don't worship your beauty. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Money is vain. Beauty is vain. If you think I'm joking, go to Bielsa. Go to Bielsa. You will see the vanity of money. You will see the vanity. Houses are submerged. Businesses in one day, what are just can fear without notice. Everything destroyed in split seconds. That's the vanity of life. This life that people are, that, 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 this life. The vanity of life. My office staff, Ernest in the office, his father died not long ago. Ernest went for the burial of the father. Just before the burial, he went to prepare the, 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 with the family for the burial. He came back and came to my house very sober. He said, Papa, I'm back. I said, welcome. How did it go? He said, Baba, that thing you are preaching is the only thing that matters. I said, what happened? So when we got there, they took me to the mortuary to go and show me my father. They opened the door of the mortuary. See dead bodies lying scattered without value. See my father, I saw him on the, one of those tables. Lifeless and helpless. You see, I stood there and I see life. You see, I called my wife. I said, that thing Baba is preaching is the only thing that matters. Friends, Friends, all this gra gra, gra 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 gra, that overbloats your ego. You have an overbloated ego. 
simple malaria will just do it like this. Stop, stop. <laughs> Please bring that blanket. Bring, bring that blanket. I thought you were all over the place. Just malaria, not eternal disease. Malaria. That small quartem will hit. Boom! Malaria will say, ah! Is the thing that is in. <laughs> Father, I don't want to die. Please, Father. I answered a call to ministry. <laughs> As if they shake like that, now you go to ministry. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. I will obey you. I will obey you. Just keep me alive, Father. I don't know whether it's from my mother's side or my father's side. <laughs> Father, if I survive this one, I promise I will be in church every day. <laughs> we are sold out. Glory to God. I say we are sold out. We preach this gospel in and out of season. Lift your right hand and say to me, I dedicate my life to serve the purpose of God all the days of my life. Stand on your feet, that's all I've got for you, man. What a service. Are you blessed in this service? Glory! Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you are not preaching the gospel, you are not growing spiritually. The proof of spiritual growth is fruits, souls, disciples raised for the kingdom of God. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Lift your right hands. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. In this building, online, on television, everybody in our campuses all over the world, I decree that these realities resonate in our minds, in our hearts. And every one of us is teared up to be committed to the cause of Christ, to be committed to the mission, to be committed to souls, to be committed to preaching and teaching and raising men in the name of Jesus. And we rejoice for the honor of Jesus put upon us to preach this gospel. We join brother Paul to say necessity is laid on us and woe is us if we preach not the gospel. Father, we are committed to the cause. We are committed to this mandate. We, we are the blessing. We carry the blessing from nation to nation. We carry the blessing to our children's children children even the preaching of the gospel and we decree that men that sit in darkness will see great light father we give you praise i pray that everyone under the sound of my voice you are strengthened with might by the spirit you will run and not be weary you will walk and not faint your life will be a living testimony through you men will come to the light through you nations will be taken over ayana i don't know who i'm talking to here you will shake nations you will shake cities you will shake continents if your amen is louder, I say you will shake continents. You will not be weary in well-doing. You will be committed in and out of season. You will be on fire when it is good and when it is not good. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Are you blessed in this service? Well, give Jesus a shout for 30 seconds this morning. Glory! Now listen, I want to take up your own offering, but just give me a minute. Today is Partnership Sunday. Uh, in the course of the last one month, when we began to look at the budget, please everybody listen, online TV, everybody. When we began to look at the budget of our conferences, the budget of the meetings, radio, TV, and all the things we are doing, we discovered that we will need to step up partnership. So, first of all, we are grateful for all the partners, and the partners are doing so well. But we had to create a new partnership platform for partners who are willing to step up and help us accomplish our monthly targets of spreading this gospel like never before. From now going into the next year. And we already have a number of partners, but they are not enough. We need a lot more in that platform where we're able to email you our budget and you take a part of it and support every month. To help us achieve the things we need to do with the gospel. Both here and around the world. Alright. So if you are interested in being part of it. It is called the Abel Damina Partnership Initiative. I mean this other partnership continues. But we want partnership at another level. So we are able to do more for the kingdom. You know the other day 
um, we were looking at a lot of things we have to do. So many things. So many things. And it's costing a lot. So if you want to be a part of that partnership, the Abel Damina Partnership Initiative to help us do more for the kingdom of God. Remember, it's only what you do for Christ that will last. Only what you do for the kingdom that has eternal value. Souls, lives, people that God died for. If you want to be a part of that initiative, you need to just shoot me a mail today. Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Just indicate Abel Damina Partnership Initiative. Then I will send you a detailed letter from me and all that you need to know so you can begin to partner with us at that level. But I want you to know that we thank all of you partners of this ministry who continually give every month to help us do the things we do all over the Blue Marble Planet. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. This to make sure everybody online gets to know about the, Dam the Abel Damina Partnership Initiative. But in the house here, yeah, if you want to be a part of it, we'll give you an opportunity before the service is over. But we're going to pray for all partners all over the world in the campuses in the next one minute for your partnership. And I want you to get out your honor offering. We'll give the honor offering and then I'll pray for all partners around the world and I'll pray for the, the honor offering. Grab your honor offering. Online community, the banking details are scrolling. And uh, those of you following on, on TV, the banking details are scrolling. Those of you on radio, you can call our office phone lines and you'll be given the information if you want to join the Abel Damina Partners Partnership Initiative. It's very, very important because we will do much more in the year to come. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. Grab your honor offerings this morning. We want to give and rejoice as we honor Christ, the risen Lord. Lift up your, your honor offerings, Father. We give in faith and we rejoice that we always have an opportunity in this church to make a difference in lives all over the world. I want to pray for all the partners, especially those who are responding today to the Abel Damina Ministry Partnership Initiative where we're able to do more for your kingdom. We're able to do de deliberate, specific projects to carry out the mandate of being blessed, to be a blessing until all the families on the earth are blessed. Lord, I pray that each one indicated commitment to that platform Grace abound towards all of them. And I pray for all partners of this ministry all over the world. People who partner with us every month in different, different dimensions to see to it that this vision keeps finding expression. We decree that you have sufficiency. We decree that you are kept by the power of God. We decree that you have ideas, concepts, and insights and opportunities to make more money. We decree that the evil one does not see you and does not touch you. You and your family are protected and preserved. We decree that in the name of Jesus, you have God's favor at work on your behalf. You too continues to grow in the knowledge of Christ. And above all, together, we cover the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the partners of this ministry. And we rejoice for victory for each one of them in the name of Jesus. And as we give our honor offering, we rejoice that our honor offering is a sweet smell before you today. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Glory! Anywhere on the pulpit, you drop your offerings as we honor Christ, the risen Lord. Hit the music. Let's do it as we give this money. Yeah. Glory.
service please I'd like you to bring out yours we are giving the two at the same time kingdom investment worship offering hallelujah amen lift it up and thank God give him thanks for the privilege to give the the privilege to honor God with our giving the privilege to make our contributions towards the preaching of the gospel, making Jesus known all over the earth. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity one more time. We are persuaded. We are committed. We are sold out. The Bible says we ought not to be weary in well-doing. We thank you, Father, for the privilege and the honor, and we thank you for the grace that we stay on good works. Thank you for this opportunity. As we give, we give with delight. We give you humility. We give in faith. And we give knowing that the kingdom of God will continue to expand. The glory is yours, and we thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' name. Let the believers say amen. amen. As you come forward, kingdom investments in the basket and your worship offering right here. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Please, you can be seated with your sweet, happy self. This we trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com. 